Hello everyone. Welcome to Namaste Tech Talks. Today we have Rajesh, uh, co-founder of Hatchfast. Today we'll be learning uh, about his journey as well as uh, what he start, how he started uh, Hatchfast, mostly automating manual QA process to automation, right? So how he did, and of course uh, would love to learn more. So Rajesh, over to you. Maybe you would love uh, love to hear more about his journey and how he started. Yeah. Thank you. So um, Sachin was my co-founder, and I have been working with some of the large enterprises uh, across US and other geographies as well. Then we saw that paste automation is still very, very inefficient process. Mm -hmm. uh, and the main reason we see still, uh, despite there being so many tools available in the market, yeah. main reason is uh, whatever enterprise softwares are being used, we don't see good integration with those. We don't see the awareness of these other tools built into the test automation suite. Right. And we think that can simplify things a lot. And that's why we started with Hatchfast. Great. And uh, maybe you, can you like uh, provide me more thoughts about how you, before Hatchfast, right? Mm -hmm. How your journey, what it looked like? So I've been with uh, a global consulting firm, it size ID firm, uh, mm -hmm. Cinecron. Uh, I've been with Cinecron for almost 12 years. And uh, I got uh, to work on some really interesting projects across geographies. Uh, it was through Cinecron that I moved to US and mm -hmm. got to work with Wells Fargo, Bank of America and other big giants uh, in finance name. Mm -hmm. So that was a very interesting journey. I think uh, Sachin's is a quite similar trajectory. He was also in Cinecron for some time and he has also worked with US Bank and uh, HSBC and the likes. So um, very good enriching experience and I think that's where the seed for Hatchpass came from. <laughs> okay, okay. Good to see like two tech is coming together and uh, founding a you know, like a company, right? So more often we see like kind of combination of sales and yeah. technical person, but that's good uh, that you were just started. So, so just to fill that gap, I've yeah. been into pre sales tools uh, only. Oh, you mean enterprises? Right? Right. I mean, not an out and out sales person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, just yeah. a player. Okay, nice. So, uh, you mentioned about uh, like automation, right? Because there are good competition as well. That is what I heard. Uh, so, how exactly Hatchfast is helping in almost like uh, providing automation in such a way that it is seamless? It's kind of a no code, mm -hmm. right? So, I would love to hear more, right? Because uh, when, it, when when we, I spoke with you about Hatchfast that time, I realized okay, so many use cases all going in my mind, right? Yeah. So, definitely would love to hear more about product. So to, uh, when we actually noted this problem and decided to tackle this head on, mm -hmm. we conducted so many interviews with QA people uh, across the globe and what are the challenges they are facing. Okay. And it's a distillation of all that learning that we have built into this. Uh, we do have a very intuitive drag and drop uh, wherein you get all the building blocks. Nice. You can construct your test case easily. Uh, you get a visual representation of that you get a flowchart and that flowchart itself is executable okay yeah. and when we don't really convert it to script and store somewhere and then yeah. you have to manage the script uh, right this is not for building only the flowchart itself executes nice okay and then uh, there is a record and play feature as well right. uh, just note down the user's actions and yeah. uh, that also helps then uh testament i would say recently we devoted to somebody from Poinshida and mm -hmm. Uh, the person right after the demo said, oh, I couldn't just use it right away. So. <laughs> that's that's a good testimony. Right? And uh, what about uh, the user personas? Who who are the people who are going to use this product? Are these QAs or project managers or like who? who can... Primarily QAs, yes. Okay. Uh, but the tool is so intuitive and easy to use. We think that it could actually expand a bit and even BAs can use it uh, mm -hmm. easily. Okay. Right. So, to create scenarios and uh, okay so does tool support any kind of a scenario creation or it has to be a manual play and record only like each scenario has to be captured early before no we do create without recording because okay. sometimes you would have to create test cases first yeah. when the product is not ready mm -hmm. so we do support scenario creation as well nice nice and have you identified any kind of a common misconceptions well i think uh Yes, I mean, when uh, enterprises embark on the automation journey, mm -hmm. uh, a common misconception is that uh, you may not get, well, I won't call it a misconception, a hurdle, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, 
resource crunch is always there. You have to uh, have a right, people trained on the particular right, skill set, right? And uh, with no code tools like Hatchpass, I think mm-hmm. we can effectively address that. Okay, but there is a learning curve, right? Always a learning curve for these tools as well. Uh, with Hashpass, I would say, you know, it's not really... Uh, so, I would anyone say it's a learning curve. Okay, anyone really. can start from day one, yes. day zero. Okay. Right? Okay. okay. And uh, what are the, like, things that... Uh, because, again, in the world of Gen AI, LLM, right? So, mm-hmm. what is the roadmap for Hatchpass in Hatchpass and AI is something? So, we are working on an exciting offering. We hope to launch around May or June. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are using Gen AI to generate the test cases and the test scripts automatically. Okay, nice. And uh, the results are actually quite encouraging so far. Nice. So, really excited to launch that. Great, great. So, uh, again, like uh, for the audience as well, right? So, we'd love to hear more about your real life example where uh, I saw that uh, your website mentions like 40% of the mm-hmm. time itself, right? Yes, so, yes, can yes. you tell me more on that? Definitely. So, we actually. Um, with one of our beta partners who is based in US, uh, they have a, a, it's a pharmaceutical CRM firm. They've migrated a test suite of uh, 3000 test cases to HatchPass. Okay. And this is a number that came from them that this is around the same, uh, saving that they are achieving. Nice. So, okay, good. So, what kind of a platform they are like? It's a web uh, company? It's a web platform. Okay. Uh, so, the web automation is the first piece that we are going back with. Okay. And uh, I believe your mobile and the desktop is. That is on the roadmap definitely. Uh, we are working on that as well. Okay. So any kind of a feedback that your early customers have given and then which helped you to improve as a platform? Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. We do take that feedback seriously. Uh, some of the capabilities that we had missed uh, or some of the integrations. For example, we are working on uh, a couple of partners as well. Where we are working on integration with Salesforce as well as mm-hmm. SAP. So we didn't really have those offerings for us. So we got that feedback that we should build this Salesforce objects awareness and that we are building it now. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we also briefly discussed about competition, right? So considering the market players that are already like well established, right? Mm-hmm. So what are the four challenges you foresee mm-hmm. or how you are going to handle those? Uh, definitely this is a big market and that attracts many players. Yes. Yeah. National. So um the differentiation is a big plus uh, that we are focusing on enterprise uh, software integration piece. We don't see many com- much competition in that. Uh, for the big players, yes, for SAP offering, there would be integrations available. But there are many tools where there is no integration available. Mm-hmm. And that's one niche that we offer. And again, uh, I think the process of building this and making it very relevant to QA, so it feeds, uh, feels very natural to Right, so that should help us. Yeah. And uh, one of the like biggest challenge what we saw when working with enterprises is compliance, security, mostly related to data, right? So how you are addressing that? So we do have on-prem offerings as well, where okay. they don't have to send data anywhere outside of their yeah. network. Okay. And uh, so definitely there is a cloud offering, but uh, enterprises can opt for on-prem very, very well as well. And then again, uh, soft to compliance and all that we can. Okay, so you guys are already compliant? Uh, we are in the process of getting compliant. Nice. Okay. And uh, again, like uh, we work with the big players like R- in RPF space, right? Mm-hmm. Automation Anywhere and yes. UI part. Yes. So how you are different than them? Uh, their main objective is to automate the manual tasks. Right. And uh, many times I see that going across tools or many repetitive tasks. Mm-hmm. And but when it comes to test automation, the goal is that you ensure that the software should be bug free or defect free. Right. Yeah. Now, even though there is overlap in the test case, I mean, uh, overlap in the usage area, mm-hmm. I think the main uh, business plank is different. Okay. Okay. Nice. And how exactly like uh, reporting works here? Like, uh, because you need to test different scenario, different versions, browsers, and whatnot. Oh, yes. right? So how exactly, again, I haven't seen the tool, but how exactly uh, a person, right? You guys are automated directly with the Jira or similar tools or how? So uh, we do have the complete test case management also. Oh, okay. Uh, So that you can also track defects also. Uh, The way, uh, well, uh, if some test case fails, we also provide a screenshot that this is where it failed. Uh, The report itself is very explanatory. 
and uh, Jira and all integrations is also fine too. Because if someone doesn't want to change their primary tool stack, mm -hmm. you should play nice with that also. So, so you mentioned test suite, right? You have ability to uh, like uh, write those as well. So yes. So on your tool, someone can come write the test cases, play and record, right? So all yes, this yes. stuff can be done, and yes. one can bring their own test cases as well. Yes. Exactly. So. Uh, are you looking for any kind of like in your roadmap, I mean? Uh, so someone, if let's say a person already has a lot of test cases, right? mm -hmm. so they are bringing their own. Mm -hmm. Does your tool support converting those manual test cases to automate uh, the actions, or mm -hmm. everyone has to do the action? So this conversion itself is not really automated yet, okay. uh, but, but that, that can be done. Be, that can be done. Okay. This is an interesting piece, definitely, uh, and that's one area where we think AI can help us. Uh, yeah. So then uh, one another uh, talking about migration uh, so far more than 80 percent market share is owned by selenium yeah uh, and that's a couple of decades old uh, we see a lot of uh, the web has changed a lot yeah we see dynamic uh, elements on web pages now yeah. is delaying loading yes and selenium is struggling to handle that so we have some workarounds built but because of this aging of selenium we see new players in market who are trying to gain share. For example, mm -hmm. many people are exploring Playwright or Cypress right. right. or the likes. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever they settle on a new option, they have to again migrate the entire test case speed to the new. Mm -hmm. And uh, with HatchPass, this can be effectively addressed because when you move those test cases to HatchPass, mm -hmm. we give them the ability to run it on Selenium or Playwright or Cypress or anywhere they want. Okay, nice. And you guys are just focusing on functional test cases of now. That's what I so far functional testing. Uh, we do see some uh, interesting plays around union test cases, but I think that's a low hanging fruit. Right. Functional right. testing is where the core comes from. Right. And uh, any any use cases you are foreseeing in terms of Gen AI? Gen AI, yes, so far, but uh, that's for code generation and the migration. Okay. That's what we are exploring. Okay. Okay. And you guys are using like. That you guys are planning to use existing models or you want your own like GPT models? Um, we have played around with uh, Llama 2 code, uh, that's a good capable model. Uh, we just have a new version being made available uh, that was recent, but then after that, we are also fine tuning it quite a lot. Yeah, okay, and again, like a lot of pieces, what I saw in the different companies is that like uh, most of the QA people, right? So, QA team. They're automatically generating test cases based using GPT, right? So right. what you guys are doing, what I heard like is uh, play and record, record and play, right? Mm -hmm. And then automate that piece. Right. So that at the scale, you can do that instead of man, uh, right. impro improving the efficiency. Right. Okay. So if you go with the existing models or say chat GPT, definitely that has matured a lot. Uh, but then there are uh, places where it actually gets blocked. Mm -hmm. For example, if there is a access block, it cannot really go beyond that and generate the test cases. Mm -hmm. Another big problem we have seen with uh, off-the-shelf models is hallucination. Right. So mm -hmm. if you tell it, give it a website and ask yeah. you to generate uh, test cases, it will give you test cases for pages non-existent. Well. <laughs> right, right, right. And what about uh, because again, in uh, in case of like, if I'm speaking about more of a process, mm -hmm. uh, agile process, right? So uh, Scrum master writes a story. Mm -hmm. Right, starting from there, like he writes acceptance criteria as well within the story. Mm -hmm. So, is there any feature that can be can your tool may support this not today? Mm -hmm. Like taking that acceptance criteria, converting to the test cases, and playing the scenario. So that will be end to end Jira integration. This is a really good solution. We don't have it right now, but definitely we can bring that. Okay, that's good to know that you guys can support that as well. What about uh, like again as a startup, you? Mm -hmm. I, what I know, like you two started this last year mm -hmm. after your uh, corporate journey, right? And then uh, after that, uh, uh, I want to understand more about how you approach to the product market fit, mm -hmm. then funding that you got the first round, and then you're in the second phase of going for the second round as well. Right. So, maybe tell me more on that. Well, uh, long journey, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a leap of faith. Uh, but then, uh, it wasn't really that difficult because we were in the same environment. We mm -hmm. had seen the problems firsthand and that we could bring that understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, it also helped that we talked to a lot of people around the globe that, uh, and we validated the idea before we started building this. And even throughout the build phase, uh, whenever something is ready and demoable, mm -hmm. we have been delivering those demos and made sure that it's very relevant. 
I think that's how you stay on the course and uh, reduce the chances of deviation. Right. So that has definitely helped uh, for funding journey also. Mm -hmm. uh, even when we are building this, uh, we were uh, in touch with a lot of VCs and uh, we were typing their portfolios, who is active in which area, and that also helped. Uh, so then uh, we didn't really, when we started raising, we didn't really have to meet a lot because uh, Fortunately, we got this in the first place. Nice, right. <laughs> now, that's a good. Uh, so that was my next question about mm -hmm. VC's interest, right? So how you know, like how the tool was attracted to you? How much tool was attracted to you in terms of? Uh, so by the time, fortunately, we had the MVP ready. Yeah. And uh, we could demo some of the capabilities. Of course, there were a lot of questions about how much we can uh, scale it. Mm -hmm. That's the core question that they would have in mind right, whenever they are writing the check. Right. So. Uh, there were uh, some scratches that we had to make that this is the yeah, yeah. Okay, so different journey <laughs> yeah. okay so now like uh, you are going towards the second round what i heard uh, yes you know, the process of that is in the process right now yes. right okay and uh, what about the beta customers uh, how so many customers you have we have uh, around five beta customers across blue right now okay uh, i can uh, two of them are based in us and uh, others are in india right now uh, working very closely with our team, trying out the products and features, and nice. giving us feedback. That definitely helps us. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks, Rajesh. This is really insightful. The product, uh, I see that a lot of potential mm -hmm. in the product, and would love to, like, of course, give the demo and sure. try it out. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank thanks you a lot. Thank you. Thanks.